I'm Gary Miller. I work for the USDA's Systematic Entomology Laboratory at Beltsville, Maryland. I'm a research entomologist working on the aphidomorpha, which includes aphids in the strict sense, adelgids, and phylloxerids. So let's run the key. Let's do an, we're going to try the lucid key. So here we have our specimen. So a little bit of background on, on lucid key. Uh, lucid key is an expert, what they call an expert system, and it works in such a way that um, you can either choose the characters or allow the key to choose the characters for the, the best character that, that prunes specimens. Okay, so let me show you here on this screen. Here is the, the interface for the Lucid Key, and this is found on a website called AFID. And when you launch the key, uh, this particular key covers 66 of the most prolificous cosmopolitan aphid species. And it includes the species that Blackman and Eastop's books, which are what I call the gold standard for aphid identification. It includes not only those for prolificous species, but also the species that are most commonly intercepted at U.S. ports of entry. So there are some on there that are not recorded on in Blackman and Eastop's key. So I think that, and, and, and we'll look, look at this as we move through this, this key. One of the, the benefits that about the Lucid program is that you can allow the, the as I mentioned, allow that program to make the best um, prune the tree the quickest. Okay, so what we start out here is on the right panel, we have all the taxa that are included in this particular key. And I always hesitate to, um, this is a good key in the sense that uh, it, it'll work you through those, those species, um, but as any key, you know, um, once you get to, to the end part, make sure you look at the specimen and, and, uh, <laughs> and verify that, okay? So in this case, because I'm looking at a, an apterous specimen, so that means it has no wings, I'm going to go ahead and pull one of the first characters. So we go to the thorax, and here we have wing presence, and we have our choice of either absent or present. So I'm going to select absent in this case. So what that did was it, it you have your feature chosen down here, and it already pruned um, specimens here, but now I'm going to, let's do this up here. I like doing this because um, what that amounts to, when you click this button, which shows you the, uh, um, the sort, it tells you what entities have been discarded. So we have 67 remaining, and we've discarded 65. So essentially, you've gotten rid of half of your critters in one, one shot. And I like, I like this kind of a key because it, you get the feeling that you're moving quickly versus hanging out in one couplet. Um, and so that's, that's kind of satisfying. So there are some buttons up here, and this magic wand is the best, next best character. Okay? You don't have to choose that, obviously, but if you want to, you can. So we're going we're gonna to choose that one. And what it does is it picks your next character, which is going to be the ratio of the terminal process, the process terminalis length, to the base length. Okay. So I'm going to move my specimen up here. We're going to go on a little higher magnification. All right. So I'm going to measure that terminal process and divide by the base length. And I'm using an ocular micrometer here. So I mentioned before that uh, uh, in the world of aphids, we do a lot of measuring and ratios of the, of the measurements here. So at this point, we want to type our, our ratio in here. And when you click on this box, 
it gives you a range, so you can't go outside that range. So if your if your range is is too high or or too low, you obviously you can't go lower than zero. But um, okay. So this particular specimen, I've got 2.6. We click OK. All right. So what that did was it discarded even more, and we're down to 18 entities. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna let it pick the next one as well, and you're gonna be measuring the length of the body to the siphunculus length. The other good thing about the Lucid key is that you can, in the main part of the key, you can, if you're not sure about what that is, you can go, there's an interactive glossary, and it tells you exactly what the length, you know, where you measure that specimen, or where, where you start the measurement, and where you end it. Um, and this is sometimes a, a problem with um, various authors, that they will start their measurements at one point and, and end it at another, and the next person might measure slightly differently. So we're going to measure the body length, which in this case, um, in the lucid key, is from that part of the fronds, tip of the fronds. to the base of the abdomen, and it does not include the siphunculus, I mean, the, the cauda, rather. So we got 100 units. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up the calculator. Let's see if we can slide it down here. And this just shows you what, how I'm doing the, the calculations here. So I'm doing the body length and I come up with a 140 units on this particular specimen. And we're going to divide by the siphunculus length. So take one that's siphunculus that's not too distorted. Okay. Oh, we kept it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I think this was a case where I actually mismeasured the siphunculus length. Um, I think I said 22 before, and I think it's, it was 33. So again, uh, it's a good example of how to err is human, OK? Again, that was a siphunculus there. OK, so let's try the next feature. So it's asking us for antenna 3 rhinaria account. Okay, so this is going to be moving up to antennal three, and you're going to be looking for rhinaria on there, and these would be structures, the sensoria, and these aren't present on antennal three. So we go to this count, and they want to enter a value between zero and 9.75. Obviously, that's an average there, so we're going to we're going to say zero. I don't see any. Okay, so we pruned it, pruned it some more here. So now we're looking at the ratio of the antennal three length to the caudal length. So we're going to be measuring that length of antennal three to the caudal length. Okay, so I get 20 units in this case. Bring it back to focus here. Call for calculator. Twenty. And then and now down to the cauda. So we're measuring from the very tip of that cauda to the base. All right, so let's put this divided by what I say, eighteen, I think. Okay, gives us a ratio of 1. So an enter value of 1 to 
So we're down between two, aphis glycines and aphis spiricola. And again, this is a, uh, an issue here. So what, again, another case where here where it's, it's very close and uh, how would I explain that? Okay, let me bring this up here. So part of it may be just my mismeasuring again, um, but uh, um, this may be one of these tweeners, what they call tweener, it's just right on the edge. All right, let's try to do next one. Okay, now we're down to the cauda, and that's the structure. Again here. So we're asked for whether the cauda is dark throughout, whether it's dusky, or whether it's pale. And this, uh, this sometimes is a hard call to make um, with stained or slide-mounted specimens. And in this case, it's certainly paler. A good, a good um, comparison is the color of that cauda in relation to the siphunculi. And you can hear it, see it's pale compared to the siphunculi. So we'll click on that. And now we end up with aphis gossypii. Okay. So let me go. Let me go back to this. One of the things, and this did not launch in the other one, but you have these little uh, sheets, and you can always click on those sheets, and it'll take you to the aphis gossypii page in Lucid. And then this gives common names. Um, but one of the benefits of this is not only do you have habitus pictures, as we see here, but if you click on the all, it shows you the habitus of the aptera and the alate, various structures here, the head, the antenna, rostrum, abdomen again, and close up of the siphunculus. And you can also click on that and it'll bring up a, a larger picture of that structure. And here's the cauda of the aptera. This is kind of a good comparison because you can see the highlight of this particular structure and look at the specimen that, that we're looking at. They're by and large very similar.